will discuss a use of arni that is cubital valve sort and combination in hypertension really can we use this yes sir we can use that and uh, let me share with you the data what we have and whatever guidelines we have on this issue uh, uh, do subscribe because uh, you would be able to get uh, notified whenever i upload a new uh, video of on information now <clears throat> I am going to present with you uh, a lady who is my friend's mother. Uh, she is 74 years old and had uh, hypertension which was still not controlled despite on a good dose of Ormisartan, Amlodipine and Chlorthalidone. So three drugs that means three drugs plus one diuretic with an adequate dose and the blood pressure is not controlled this means that this patient has a resistant hypertension apart from that she had a dyspnea on exertion even sometimes she used to have dyspnea on a day-to-day -day activity that is class 3 and we performed her echo which i'm going to show you in my next slide she had a uh, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and once we know that person has heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, control of blood pressure becomes very, very important and critical for symptoms and progression of heart failure in future. So that's uh, uh, a look at the left ventricular hypertrophy. That's a personal long axis view and you have a short axis view and you have a four chamber view showing you a marked left ventricle hypertrophy and then you see you have e is more than a and e a ratio is more than two that itself indicates a very high lvedp but if you combine this with the uh, the e to e prime which was 17.5 that means he has a markedly elevated la pressures and lvedp and you know combine this with a tricuspid regurgitation of more than 2.8 meter per second that qualifies for heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction and we had an additional feature that is an left atrium was enlarged and it was more than 34 uh, uh, per meter square and then we had an la strain which was also reduced so all these features are consistent with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction couple of terminologies for which you can understand that drug resistant hypertension that in case you use number of uh, uh, drugs and bp is uh, still controlled and then you have a controlled resistant hypertension the patient had resistant hypertension the blood pressure uh, was more on three drugs but you add another drug the bp gets controlled we call it controlled resistant hypertension and there are other terminologies as well so once i have a patient which has a, a uncontrolled hypertension despite three drugs and we have documented that home blood pressure monitoring and ambulatory blood pressure monitoring also is normal uh, showing the same hypertensive changes and we've ruled out all possible uh, causes which can lead on to hypertension then we know that we are dealing with the resistant hypertension what would be my next step the common thing which i do and that's what is uh, told in the literature and a lot of guidelines and also saying the same the next step should be an uh, aldosterone uh, inhibitor you can use aldosterone or aplenerone for uh, this purpose you have other choices in case the blood pressure is not controlled and once we have a patient whose uh, potassium is on the higher side or patient has CKD, then angiotensin receptor blocker, uh, aldosterone blocker may not be a very appropriate choice. The risk of hyperkalemia. But other things what we have, you have a young patient, you can use a beta blocker in case you find the heart rate is on the higher side. Otherwise, we can use an alpha blocker like uh, prazosine uh, and doxazosine. We can use centrally acting drugs like clonidine and moxonidine. We can use vasodilators like uh, minoxidil. So these are the choices once we have a patient with resistant hypertension. What we did in this patient? We, we started with the 
uh, uh, spironolactone that was my first choice and then we uh, started with the torosamide a loop diuretic because reason is that he was uh, dyspneic and she had a feature of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction she deserved the better uh, uh, diuretic for that and the blood pressure despite that remained high we did an ambulatory blood pressure monitoring which showed the systolic average blood pressure during day time was 154 there was an adequate nocturnal dipping but the blood pressure was on the higher side we started in prazosin but unfortunately she didn't tolerate prazosin she had giddiness and uh, on getting up and that's a very common side effect what we see in these patients we stopped that and we started centrally acting drug moxonidine 0.2 mg build up to 0.3 mg but eventually didn't have any great effect on the blood pressure in fact she got hospitalized because of the increased blood pressure and pulmonary edema because she stopped diuretic because of uh, you know excessive urination and she was not very comfortable with it and uh, on discharge she was uh, started on clonidine and uh, the rest of the things almost continued and bisoprolol was added but her heart rate went down and uh, we thought that bisoprolol should not be a right choice and as of we know that in patient with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction beta blockers are not of a good choice that's my another video which you can refer to i would share the link later now we added arni we added scubitril valsart and combination 100 mg twice a day and stopped the centrally acting drug that was the the first drug we stopped because we wanted to stop the drug which are which is unsafe and then what happened was the blood pressure got under control her blood pressure was 135 by 74 and we reduced amlodipine we continued torosamide and spironolactone on combination then eventually we stopped the uh, uh um, the amlodipine as well and look at what she was controlled on she was controlled on arni 200 mg twice a day she was controlled on clorthalidone and she was controlled on aldecton and her breathlessness also improved by control and she did not require a loop diuretic which you remember she did not like the literature supports us because the study started pouring in in 2021 when we have data that we the scubitril and valsart in combination can be a good uh, way of treating hypertension and that's one study which showed a significant reduction in office blood pressure and 24 hours blood pressure with arni 8 weeks of therapy uh, another study in 2021 showed that uh, resistant hypertension and mra resistant hypertension uh you use scubitril and valsartan combination versus valsartan alone you do find a significant reduction in 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 blood pressure uh we used this in a dialysis patients and we found that the blood pressure response was excellent with the scubitril valsartan combination another study which said that scubitril valsartan when we switched from azelsartan to that and within 2 months we had a significant reduction in mean blood pressure on ambulatory blood pressure monitoring now we have a uh, uh, data and we have studies these are published angiotensin receptor blockers is a novel antihypertensive drug and the studies came from uh, uh, japan and uh, uh, china and these studies actually showed that arni should be a good choice in resistant hypertension and we are getting more and more consensus data on that and we do now understand scubitril valsartan saltan is a new weapon which can be used in resistant hypertension uh, with more ease and comfort and less side effects and would do great job so to end my uh, talk i would tell you that arni is very safe in uh, to be used in resistant hypertension and it's quite effective we it reduces pill pill burden because other drugs we are able to stop once you are on 200 mg of uh, arni twice a day and it's a good idea to subscribe so that i'll keep posting something uh, new what we have uh, thanks for watching and happy learning